Hello and welcome to our show. Today we are going to be discussing the chemicals of life. An overview. Are you wondering what makes you come to life? There are four important chemicals made majorly from carbon, hydrogen and oxygen that are known as the chemicals of life. The four chemicals. Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are the body's main source of energy. They contain the elements carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. They come in two kinds. Simple sugars, monosaccharide, are the simplest form of carbohydrates. Complex sugars, disaccharide and polysaccharide. Simple sugar, monosaccharide. Simple sugars can provide a lot of energy for immediate usage. However, they contain no other useful nutrients. Example, glucose. Complex sugar, disaccharide and polysaccharide. These are good sources of energy. The body can easily store this form of energy for rapid use in the future. Animal cells store complex sugars in the form of glycogen. Plant cells store complex sugars in the form of starch. Examples Disaccharide, maltose Polysaccharide, starch or glycogen Foods containing carbohydrates are bread, root vegetables, potatoes, pasta and milk. As mentioned before, Energy from carbohydrates is converted into glycogen and is stored in the liver and in our muscles. When energy is needed, the body changes that glycogen into glucose, which is then used by the body during aerobic respiration. If a lot of carbohydrates is eaten, it will be stored as fat. Fats Fats are used for energy, but only when carbohydrate supplies run low. They contain the elements carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Their simplest forms are fatty acids and glycerol. There are two types of fat. Saturated fat. These are usually found in foods such as milk, butter, cheese and meat. And unsaturated fat. These are usually found in foods such as fish oils, cooking oils and vegetable oils. Saturated fats are converted to cholesterol by the liver. There are two types of cholesterol. HDL, high density lipids, must be in greater amounts as it is beneficial and good. And LDL, low density lipids, must be in controlled amounts or else the person may get infected with coronary heart disease. For this reason, no more than 10% of your energy should come from eating saturated fats. If the percentage level of saturated fats in your diet increases, fat deposits begin to build up inside of the blood arteries, making them stiffer, less elastic and narrower. When this particularly happens in the coronary artery that supplies oxygen to the heart, very less oxygen is supplied to it decreasing its performance and increasing the risk of coronary heart disease. This usually results in blood clot and a heart attack. Eating too much fat leads to obesity, coronary heart disease and diabetes. The functions of fats. They are needed to keep us warm. They are stored in the adipose tissue, which can break down the fats if the body's carbohydrate stores get exhausted and the adipose tissue is needed to insulate our body. Proteins. Proteins are used to generate energy only when the body has exhausted its store of fat and carbohydrates. Proteins are very important for the body. Our muscles and other tissues, haemoglobin, fibrin, keratin, collagen, DNA and enzymes, etc. are all made up of proteins. The proteins you eat are broken down into amino acids and are used by the body to build and repair cells and to make blood cells. Proteins are made by the synthesis of amino acids in the ribosomes of cells. Carbon, hydrogen, 
oxygen and nitrogen and a bit of sulfur is what amino acid molecules contain. Food containing proteins are eggs, fish, etc. Quashiacor is characterized by a protruding abdomen due to a lack of proteins. Water. The body is majorly composed of water. Approximately 60% of an adult's weight is composed of water, 80% of a child's. It is vitally important that you drink enough water. Dehydration can seriously damage performance of the body. Utilization of water. Water is used in our bodies for a vast number of reasons. Here are some of them. It is an important solvent. It is needed for carrying our metabolic processes. It is beneficial in excreting waste body products such as urea. It can cool down our bodies significantly by releasing sweat. It is needed for enzymes to dissolve in it. And it is the major part of blood plasma. The tests. This section focuses particularly on the tests to detect the presence of the chemicals of life. Testing for carbohydrates. There is a simple test for carbohydrates. Just add Benedict's solution to the food and heat it up. However, to give you a detailed description, here we go. 1. Cut or grind a piece of the food to be tested. 2. Add some water to the food and try to dissolve it in a test tube. 3. Add some Benedict's solution to the test tube, which is blue as it contains copper salts. 4. Heat the test tube until it is 80 degrees Celsius. Observe the colour change from blue to brick red, blue to green to yellow to orange and ultimately brick red. Safety precaution, however, use a water bath to heat the test tube. Test for starch. Put a small piece of food on a white tile so that colour change can be noticed. Add a drop of iodine solution to the food. Notice the colour change to blue-black. Testing for fats. Fats don't dissolve in water and thus Ethanol needs to be added. Use the following steps. 1. Chop and grind small amounts of food to be tested. 2. Add the food into a clean test tube. 3. Pour some pure ethanol onto it. 4. Shake it to dissolve. 5. Take another test tube and add some distilled water into it. 6. Pour the liquid part into the second test tube. A milky appearance proves that the food contains fat. Testing for proteins. 1. Put the food into a test tube. 2. Add a little water. 3. Add some potassium hydroxide solution. 4. Add two drops of copper sulfate solution. 5. Shake the tube gently. An appearance of a purple colour proves that protein is present. Energy calculations. One gram of carbohydrates gives 17.1 kilojoules of energy. One gram of protein gives 18.2 kilojoules of energy. One gram of fat gives 38.9 kilojoules of energy. This is the end of our guide. Thank you for listening and we hope that you found it informative. Next we will be discussing plant nutrition. Please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe for more. Until next time, take care.